So even if you get a slip lead and, and start with even just the sit, you know that he knows the sit. Awesome. Yes. Let's get let's start getting him to stay. Yeah. He's pretty funny <laughs> sometimes with a sit. So he'll be like at the other end of the room and I'll say, Ralph, sit. He'll either like sit where he is mm -hmm. or he'll walk up to me and sit. But sometimes he'll sit like facing like a weird direction, like facing the wall or <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> it's almost like he gets like nervous. He's like, oh, 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 oh. oh and then he like shuffles yeah. and then he'll sit and it's like, what are you doing? You're like facing the other way. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Let's Boop Snoots. Boopity boop. Boopity boo. My name's Heidi. And my name is Vero. And today we're going to talk about this new series that we found on Netflix called yeah. Canine Intervention. Yes. Da -da -da. I like it. First, though, just because it's new and exciting. I'm probably more obsessed than you are, but let's talk about your Popeye! Popeye! <laughs> pop, Popeye update! <laughs> so, Ralph is doing well. Mm -hmm. He's already grown. They grow so fast. His limbs are longer. His face isn't as, like, puppy-like. No? His... Well, he, he's still puppy-like, but yes. it's changing. Yes. Yeah, and his little, like, you know, like, under his, like, snoot, um, between, like, his nose and his, like, lip? Yeah. It's, like, a little bit darker now. Like, it's more black. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, he's growing. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh, my God. And so his hair is a bit longer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I find I'm, like, the, um, like, the adult hair. Yeah. It's, like, sticking out longer. Oh, my goodness. Yeah so cute oh my god ralph is a little golden retriever puppy for anyone who's tuning in for the first time um he's the sweetest little munchkin ever super, super yes. cute and how's the training going it's going well uh so he's very good with impulse control mm -hmm. uh so opening the front door and just like sitting and waiting for me to say so my release word is free Mm -hmm. uh, so he's good if I stand back but as soon as I take a step he starts so I have to work on that mm -hmm. but he'll just sit there until I either like take a step or I say free and he's very good when I put down his food he'll wait mm -hmm. so yeah so that's going well um, I'm having trouble with Ralphie while I'm preparing his food mm -hmm. he's very jumpy so it's really hard because I'm feeding him raw. Mm -hmm. So I'm keeping like one hand clean. And then the other hand is like scooping the food out of the container. Yeah. And I bought these gloves. They're just awful. It's like I'll put my hand in and my hand just wants to like slip out. Oh, They're no. very like thin and they're large, but I'm just going to use them just to get through them. Yeah. So it's really hard to like scoop and then putting the food in the bowl without the glove <laughs> coming off. Yes. And then I have to control Ralph and he's jumping and I'm like, no, sit. And he sits for like five seconds and then he goes to the other side and starts jumping. Like he's a little bit better. So what I would suggest here is maybe like instead of at food time, um, and, and again, this is going to help even with like, you're doing the whole door thing. So ho opening the door wide up. And if you take a step, he's like going to, is working on like the sit stays and he is pretty young, but I mean, I just started with Gibbs and then you build up the amount of time you can do it for. Exactly. So I can send you a video and we can maybe even post it too of Gibbs when he was a puppy and we were practicing sit stays. So what I would do is I would get the slip, the slip collar. Now, Vero, you had mentioned earlier that you had like read somewhere that uh, they don't recommend using a slip lead until like a certain age. I started from day one with Gibbon on the slip lead. 
and yeah. that he wore around the house and everything like that. And um, I think it's more about like finding the right, there's like different types of slip leads. Like there's like super thin ones that are like on a chain. There's like cloth ones. So I had a cloth one that was like not too big, not too small. Cause if it's small, like, yeah, you don't want to be like choking the dog or having it slip down their neck or it's not like a good fit. Right. Yeah. So mine was like this, like sort of thick, like braided sort of material okay um oh, I think I remember seeing it in one of your pictures yeah so and you'll you'll see it in the, in the video to the, that I share with you but anyway so it's it was like a good size and a good fit for him and then what I did with him is I hooked the leash so didn't even tie it just hooked it around a door handle and then I ask him to sit and then I start taking steps away from him okay and, and then when he goes to walk towards me the leash is at its end and it's putting that pressure exactly where you want it. And it forces right. them into a sit once they get to the end of the leash. And when they sit good, you, that, that's when you give the treat, you reward the sitting and staying and then walk, keep walking back. And then it it's forcing them to sit there and you're going good and then come back and then reset again. And then like put them back on the door and start walking, like ask them to sit like with the leash, like loose up like mm -hmm. still tied to the door handle and start walking back and like uh 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 sit and walk right. back but eventually when he gets to the end of the leash it's going to force him into it because there's no more length left and it's giving him that pressure that makes it forces him to sit back right okay so even if you get a slip lead and and start with even just the sit you know that he knows the sit awesome yes let's get let's start getting him to stay yeah he's pretty funny <laughs> sometimes with a sit so he'll be like at the other end of the room and I'll say, Ralph, sit. He'll either like sit where he is mm -hmm. or he'll walk up to me and sit. But sometimes he'll sit like facing like a weird direction, like facing the <laughs> wall or <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> it's almost like he gets like nervous. He's like, oh, 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 oh. And then he like shuffles yeah. and then he'll sit and it's like, what are you doing? You're like facing the other way <laughs> <laughs> but he's still a puppy right so like yes. if, if you mark this at like no matter which way he's facing he's still he's he's still completed the command oh for sure yeah no that's and so he's good. getting good that's with good. his come command too oh good yeah yes. yeah yeah no i use the slip lead from like day one because like from day one you're communicating uh with them through leash pressure leading you're able to lead them much better yeah. So again, like if you like, you can, and the, the, the good thing about the slip lead is that it's super versatile. So if you want to start like practicing like recall, which you will like later on, you um can hook the end of the slip lead onto a longer leash. So now like you, you go away and you say, come, if they don't, then you say, Ralph, no. And again, you start pulling on that leash, giving that pressure. And as soon as he starts walking to you, you release the pressure. Yes. That's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. You're coming towards me. The uncomfortable feeling goes away when you start doing what and what what I want you to do and you mark it with your good or yes or whatever and then reward of whatever kind right mm -hmm. but um yeah yes. he's doing yes. good and the other thing that I'm working on is him jumping on the coffee table oh which is low mm -hmm. and the couch yeah so, so that's difficult because as he grows, our coffee table is so low that his head is just going to like hover over it. And oh, yeah. I want to like nip that in the bud. Like you're not to put your head like over the coffee table. Again, with the slip lead, that would be like a little quick little pop, like a, a, a with your no sound. Mm -mm. Yeah. Not so he's pretty good if I'm standing there. Yep. Like I'll see him walk towards the table mm -hmm. and then I'll walk there and I'll be like, no off and then he'll just sit yeah but if I'm like in the kitchen and he's just kind of like playing around he will jump on the coffee table <laughs> so get out your like bonker. just his front paws get out your bonk your bonker so like get out a little rolled up dish oh yeah with elastic around it and so so from from the kitchen if you see him with paws up on the coffee table it's Ralph no and if he doesn't, and if he does like, or off, like Ralph off, if he doesn't listen, Ralph, no, if he doesn't listen, throw, pitch that bonker at him. The old face cloth bonker. Old face cloth. And it's hard when they're puppies because they're going to be like, toy! <laughs> 
Well, that's what I'm thinking because I tried the spray. Yeah. And he liked it. (laughs) (laughs) Just like opening his mouth and trying to catch it. And (laughs) just like, oh, God. Is there anything that you've seen him like um, afraid of or react to or anything like that? Yes, but (laughs) things that I cannot use. So I've seen Ralph be scared of two things so far. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's not scared of anything and he's just like a little <laughs> tank. <laughs> Sometimes he'll like come charging at you and then he'll like charge at you and then he'll get in front of you and then he'll sit and you're like, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was outside last night and the light from the front porch mm-hmm. casted like a shadow of us onto like the neighbor's house. <gasps> yeah. And he saw it. And he got scared. So Ralph <laughs> is scared of his own shadow. <laughs> oh my God, And this evening I was outside with him. It was like a little bit dark. And there was a dog whining like a few houses down. Oh yeah. So he just kind of like sat and like was, was tilting like his head. The head tilt. Oh my yeah. God, you need to get the head tilt on video. <laughs> and then he ran back to the porch and then oh. he sat on the porch Wow. And then he wouldn't come back down. Oh. And then he peed on the porch. Oh, Ralph. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's a pup. He's a pup. So I can't use that against him. No, you can't. To make him stop. No. But I, I can try the bunker and then the can monster. Yes. Yes. I need to get that can monster to you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The can monster, for anyone who doesn't know what the can monster is, um, it was one of the strategies that we used in some of the training and stuff, especially uh, when it has to do with barking. But again, it looks like Ralph might need it in other contexts as well. But uh, (laughs) people take rocks or they take pennies or they take something and they put it in a can. And then when you shake it, it makes like a super loud and abrupt noise that almost scares the dog. So again, it's like uh, you're distracting them out of whatever behavior it is that they're doing. And Vero coined it the the can monster (laughs) and then decided to make a prototype and (laughs) made like a a can that looks like a monster (laughs) makes a scary noise when you shake it yeah amazing it's beautiful she lent it to me um matt still uses it the odd time when gibbon barks out the front oh yeah somebody walking by with their dog oh i'll have to make a second one then and it works pretty good but no, no, no. I'll have to bring that back over. Ralph Ralph is in need of a can monster. <laughs> <laughs> but besides yeah, that, it's pretty good. He has like this hour, I guess they call it like the witch hour, yes. where he's just like fired up. When is it? Like zoomies and jumping on everything and biting. It's usually in the evening between like five and seven. I wonder if it's like the same for all dogos because some of my colleagues at work were mentioning the same thing about their puppies. They're like, oh my God, he goes like berserk in the evening. Like, yeah, really rambunctious. And I think having my boyfriend come home Mm -hmm. just adds to like that excitement. Excitement. Yeah. It'll be interesting as he gets older and starts learning the, the, the commands, it will be getting him to sit and stay until. Um, your BF comes through the door, takes off of his, like his, his coat, like, you know what I mean? Until you release, until either you or him releases. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So other things I was doing with Ralph today. um, So I sat on a stool and I had Ralph sitting in front of me. uh, So I would reach and grab his collar, like Mm -hmm. tightly enough. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when he, he wouldn't move, I'd be like, yes. And then I'd give him a treat. And then I do it over and over again. Mm -hmm. And um, he was sitting and I would hold a treat in the palm of my hand with my hand open Mm -hmm. uh, close enough to him Mm -hmm. and just like an impulse control thing. Yeah. Um, But he got it like from the very start, like even the first time I did it, he just didn't move. I was like, yes. (laughs) And I gave it to him. That's awesome. Um, So we did that today. That's good. So that's good. Yay. He also cut his nails oh yes yes and we cut a little too far today oh no mm. poor ralph oh, I i'll can do remember. better next time yeah I've, i felt I've, bad i it always feels bad and that's why i've moved 100 percent to the dremel because you can't you you might hit it and it might be sensitive to them but you're not gonna snip it right off 
Right. Like, cause like same, like I, I, I told, I mentioned this several times that I guess it's a Weimar enter trait because I, again, I've tried touching, like I, I still continue to touch Gibbs paws every day, but he hates it. And, um, so nail cutting can be a bit of a trying time, but we w- did some work with the Dremel, like again, hand feeding like his dinner to him and getting him comfortable with the, the Dremel touching his paws and that sort of thing. But one of the last times that I clipped, cause I used to clip and then use this like sort of cheaper version of a Dremel, like to just sand off like all the corners and stuff like that. And all the like stray little nail pieces. Um, when I clipped him, he, he yelped and, and I did like, he was yelping before I even clipped. So I thought he was being like a Weimaraner drama queen, <laughs> <laughs> but then I looked afterwards and I'd hit the quick. I did. Oh, but he was like yelping before I even touched, but like, yeah, so I was so it's like, hard hey, to say. I'm like, you're being like a drama, like a guy. And then I looked back afterwards and there was like, I could see a bit of blood and I was like, Oh no, no, I actually cut him. <laughs> I was like, okay. I feel bad. <laughs> And then um, <laughs> I moved to the Dremel. So it's like literally not even made for dogs. It's like a power tool bought yeah. from like Rona. I asked for it for Christmas <laughs> and it's been going really well. And he's like getting better and better each time now. So and okay. Becky's just, Becky's just always been amazing. She's yeah. Yeah. She literally just like stands there and is like pot cure. Okay. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for getting rid of my dragon lady nails. <laughs> but um, no, she's doing very well. So yas, yas to the Dremel for nail. Cuts. Yes, and I have one. To- I yeah. introduced it to him today. That's awesome. Hmm. I would do that like once a week. Once I think week. my clippers are also too big. He didn't yell for anything. Like he yeah. didn't really act any differently. Hmm. So I thought it was fine. And then I did the other paw and then he kind of lied down and fell asleep. And I was looking at his nails to see like how good a job I did. Yeah. And I saw that it was like a little bit bloody, but it wasn't dripping or anything. It was just yeah. like, I, I must have caught like just the very, very tip. Yeah. 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 Ugh. 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 All right. Well, yeah. shall we talk about this show? Yes. So spoiler alert to everyone. Not that there's like, it's like a huge like dramatic show or anything. It's literally about um, this guy who trains dogs like really well. He's like the dog. He's It's like, a, well, it's like any of the amazing dog trainers that we talk about. Yeah. But um, um, so you watched episode three and four, right? Eh? Yeah. I actually and- watched five also. I think I watched like a head to, I watched uh, like, so I watched one and two, but what impressed me, so what is his name? This is so terrible. I don't even know. Just, uh, just seer. Yes, yes, yes. So he is like this hardcore gangsta dude, dog trainer. <laughs> yeah. From o- Oakland, California, like grew up in the hood and had a dog growing up, a pit bull. I don't know if you heard it on your episode. This is an no. episode one. He talks about. So I felt like I missed part of that yes. story. So in the first episode, so you see, you meet this tough guy, like he talks about like a bit about what what he does, but like, um, as he's going to meet like one of his, like, it's the, what the first show is about. It's this guy with a, with a pit bull, which I'll tell you about in a second. But, um, he talks about growing up with his dog and that his dog was his buddy and his dog had his back, like, and he had this great time, but his dog was protective and bit somebody and he had to put his dog down. And so here's this like tough dude, like, who's like awesome at what he does. And like, you can, you can see that right out the get go, but like in episode one, he talks about why he got into it. So describes this and literally starts describing taking his dog to the vet to be put down and he's like bawling like on on the first show so uh, again we've talked about this before we talked about on our like super sad and depressing shows but like you can be like the toughest of tough but when your dog dies it makes a grown man cry (laughs) it it, does it makes a like tough ass dude like out of oakland california cry like on a like (laughs) yeah you know it's major not easy series on netflix so um anyways so uh having said that he realized that you need 
control of your animal. So started like uh, training in various different types of dog training and he helps different people. So I found, so episode one was very interesting because it's very cool. And I, and I found that in the different episodes that we watched, there were sort of like different challenge challenges. And, and when we talked about trainers before, and even one of the clients on one of these shows um, mentions that it is, it's not just about the dog. It's about, it's about the people too. He's like, he, he talks about their hangups because people, like we mentioned on some of these shows, it's what you're bringing to the relationship too. Mm -hmm. Like if you've got, if if you've got issues that you're leaning on your dog for, for something like, let's say you don't have any grandkids and you're empty nesting and now you buy this dog and you're humanizing it to like the next level. That's your issue, not the dog's. (laughs) <laughs> episode four wait till yep. you hear about it <laughs> oh, God, did you yeah. listen to it right yes <laughs> yes so um so i'll tell i'll tell you about episode one and two the uh the two ones that i watched and i found episode two for anybody out there with a new dog Ooh. or who's adopted a dog episode two is an excellent show to watch about basic dog training like Ooh. where to start from d- from day one you know what I mean like just like getting the dog to focus how do you do that he talks about hand feed and it's like people notice that from the second this guy walks into the room they're listening to him and they're just like how do you do that and it's very easy it's very easy and there's more videos just like it but anyways I recommended it to a bunch of my friends at work I'm like watch watch episode two it's Mm. like it's awesome it will show you like right at the get-go how to get your dog to focus on you and what you're saying and what you expect of of him so Episode one is about uh, this guy in LA and he looks like a a single guy who likes to mingle, a single guy who likes to mingle. He's a very very social guy and um, he was looking for a dog and went onto this rescue website and found this like pit bull. And she is, she's very gorgeous and her name is Lady Macbeth. (laughs) Aww. And the rescue site did this awesome job. It was like one of those people that come and have like professional photos done. And like the photo that they posted, like she's <laughs> very, she's very pretty. So here's Ooh. Lady Macbeth's story though. She belonged to a, a homeless uh, person. And mm. then in an altercation of some sort, the homeless person was shot and passed away. And in that oh. same altercation, she was shot and lost no way. one of her legs so it is a three-legged pit bull oh and is she the picture on the uh yes when you, yeah. okay yes yeah. and um so this guy brought her into her, his home so he 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 talks about bringing her home on the first night and she was very standoffish and he was in that same boat where i'm sure lots of dog owners are at some point where you think oh no what have i done <laughs> What did I do? Uh, what did I do? I did that with scraps. I did that with a uh, gibbon back. I'm sure I did it with like all of them because like dogs don't come without their issues and we don't come without ours. So he was like, what did I do? And then on the first night, on the first night, she crawled into bed with him and slept next Aww. to him. And then he just, he just said, after that, we were inseparable. He's like the bond just That's happened. so cute. You know, like in the movie, in the movie Twilight, it's like the, he imprinted on me. <laughs> 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 he didn't say that but oh. that's sort of the the vibes I was getting from that <laughs> so um but the problem with that and the problem with her behaviors coming from the situation that she came from is he couldn't have anybody over to the house because she's protective right she's scared right. she's anxious she's got like who knows what's going on she's got like no confidence because uh <sighs> who knows what her life was like living with a homeless individual. Right. And then to have something scary, like, you know, like the gunshot, imagine how scary that would have been in the pain as a result. And then being put in the shelter and the surgery, like that's a, that's traumatic. That's traumatic for humans who have like an understanding of it, but she literally had like no under anyways issues. And she was, she started biting one of his friends. So Jazir come comes in. I really need to look up and make sure I'm saying his name right because I feel I'm gonna feel really bad if we aren't. But anyways, um, comes in and starts talking. To, st- he he does like an assessment and tries to figure it. So he tries to see, okay, is she food motivated? Is she like uh, right. 
praise motivated and starts figuring out those sort of things. And he starts, you know, trying to step into the owner and watching what her reactions are. So he's doing a quick little uh, assessment on her. Then the next thing he does is he takes her back to um, his facility which is like pretty much like anybody, any of the dog trainers where I've seen like the, the environment which they work in, it's the same. So they always do a bit of agility training because that like promotes confidence in dogs. So like running up and down ramps, like w- walking alongside like um, benches or whatever and like just doing basic commands. And then again, like back to the basic training. And all he uses is either food or a slip lead. Or whatever mm-hmm. it is that motivates them. Like there was another episode that I'm sure you're going to talk about where it was it was drive. It was like prey. So it's like this yes. one. They took all the toys away. And then that's what you're using as your reward to keep yeah. them motivated and keep them focused on you. So anyway, so um, the episode, like he transforms this this dog and now this guy can have like and he sh- then he comes back with the dog. So only some of them I find he takes back to his facility not all of them like an episode two which i'll tell you about in a sec he he doesn't i think it depends on what it is exactly that's going on with the dog but i think the more aggressive ones like where there's biting and stuff like that involved i think he takes them back to the facility to do a bit of that agility and some of the basic command sort of training he does and then he brings them back to the owner and then teaches the owner how to uh go along with these exercises and stuff like that so beautiful story guy's super happy lady macbeth is doing awesome she's more confident she's not guarding anything all right episode two so uh, i'm impressed right at the get-go so again like yeah and i divvied up some episodes here but i just kept watching because i was like i I don't know maybe maybe it's like i could watch dog training like literally all day i'm like oh yeah me too oh cool (laughs) oh i see what he did there you know what i mean and you wonder sometimes if it's something that you could do but um anyways so in episode two It's this young couple who are married and then they just decided to rescue a dog. So they got this beautiful German Shepherd, beautiful German Shepherd. Oh man, is he a cutie. But it always shows them with their dog at the beginning of the episode. They can't even walk this thing down the street. He's like jumping on cars. He's like lunging out at stuff. He's like all over the place and like trying to, uh, um, he's just completely uncontrollable and they're like sit sit stop no no stop stop and and you can tell that the owner's getting like super frustrated it's so frustrating when they don't listen right like there's sometimes yeah. where you're just like oh my god oh my god i'm gonna kill you um <laughs> but like um and that's why they're lucky they're so cute but <laughs> yes <laughs> he, you can see him getting so frustrated, but he can't like there's there's no accountability there So uh, again, like we've said, you can stand there yelling, sit, 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 sit. Yeah. Stop, stop. Down, down, down. If you don't show them what down means, they don't, they don't know. Yeah. So literally in the first three minutes that this guy comes into their apartment, he has the dog sitting there and staring at him over here and like sit over here and like sit so and then he, they takes him out for a walk and watches him and he's like well okay guys like so what are you doing to make sure that he stops or that he's down or that he's like whatever and then he starts showing them just and again this dog it was all just about the food so he, he told them he's like okay so from now on you're hand feeding all the meals and he's like and you're showing them what gets him paid so i'm sitting he's sitting there holding food in his hand and the dog just comes up like literally in the first three minutes and just sits there because he knows if he sits like he's gonna get food and so and then you mark it with sit and good and then like again he gives what i find interesting about him which i haven't seen with others but maybe maybe i didn't watch them as much is that he gives a release word for like everything so after he like asks them to sit or to go over here or down then he goes break and he throws like a pe- a piece of food like off mm. so that they they run away so you're teaching them break means like okay you can you can yeah, leave you're and, free like, to do whatever, you do want. whatever. Yeah. yeah so i found that interesting i i never did that like and and it like so also when you watch this you sort of reflect on your own training because my gibbs is my precious boy he's sitting here with me now cuddling up but um he knows the place command very well like even if people are coming to the door or whatever it's place and when somebody's like knocking on the door it's it's definitely harder for him to sit in the place and he's sitting there like (laughs) 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 
<laughs> like waiting, <laughs> like just waiting, like for you. And our release word is okay. Which again, I wish I'd cho- chosen a different word because you say okay a lot in conversation. <laughs> yeah. But um, um, sometimes when I put Gibbs in a place uh, command, and then uh, it's not necessarily like, it, and he's pretty good at stay, staying there. But um, even when I say like, like it's not be- because of, of a, like he, th- I think Gibbon thinks that the place command is for a specific reason, like somebody being at the door or because right. he got in trouble or because I'm cooking in the kitchen and he's like, and he knows not to be in there or that type of thing. And um, some, but sometimes I just put him there. Like, even if he's to, like, I don't know, just to get him out of the way. <laughs> sometimes yeah. I'm just like place given. And like, he, he goes there. And then when I'm like, I'm like, okay. He's like, well, like, there's nobody. <laughs> he's like hesitant to like, <laughs> he's sort of like, he's like, there's nothing as exciting maybe. So maybe he wants to like continue laying there. But like, I find he's like very weird with my release command sometimes. And maybe it's because I didn't teach him that it's like, yes, like you can get off. Like, yeah, yeah you know what I mean? Or maybe he's confused because we say, okay, like all the time, because sometimes I say, okay. And like, and I'm like, no, what are you doing? Like, place. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I just said, okay. Like, oh, no when I'm talking to my kids or my husband or something without even realizing it. Right. So again, choose your words wisely people, but um, it did not take any like amount of incredible style training or anything to get this German because German shepherds are smart and they figure it out quick. Mm-hmm. And he, this German shepherd was like nothing. And like, this was about to be like a relationship ender for them because this guy came from like a, a family background where like, and it's so funny because it like, they get emotional sometimes in some, like some of their discussions because the husband was like, no, like I come from a place where you have to respect, like, and it bothers me when he doesn't respect me. Whereas his wife came from like, sort of like a bit of like an emotionally abusive background. So when you're like yelling constantly, stop and no, and nah, like she was like, stop yelling at our dog. So like they were not on the same page at yeah. all when it came to like the dog training. And it was like really detrimental to the relationship. And like just with like learning how to get the dog to understand what you're saying in like such a small amount of time made such a, a drastic difference to their relationship. And now they love their dog and now everything's under control and yay for dog training. Yay. Yay. All right. Enough so, blabbing from me. <laughs> I looked him up and his name is Joss. Joss. So I don't know if in episode one and two, his wife is pregnant. Yes. And they have a boy named Jazir. Jazir. Yeah. Yes. So that's where I got that. I thought they had the okay. same name. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's close. Yeah. <laughs> Yas Joss. <laughs> Yas to the Joss. Yas Joss. Mm-hmm. Uh, so episode three is about security dog training. So he meets up with this uh, gentleman. His name is Andre Berto. Mm -hmm. He's a world-class professional boxer. So some of you might know who he is. So he trains dog to be a security dog. So this guy wanted a dog uh, for security reasons for when he's kind of like traveling and his wife and his new baby girl are alone. He just wanted a dog there to make sure that, uh, that they were safe. Um, so he does have a breeding program for protection dogs and he does refreshers about like four times a year minimum on all his dogs. So he provided Andre with a security dog. The dog's name is Nino I believe it was Jass's dog first. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he thought about keeping him, I think. Yeah. And I think it was hard for him to kind of let him go. Yes. And this is a Dutch shepherd. He's just beautiful. Beautiful dog. They almost look like Egyptian kind of. Like it's like it's like picture yeah. the German hair, but with like a less like beefier coat. Like they're more sleek looking shepherds. It's like a Malinois mixed with a German shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are beautiful. Yeah. Or like a a Nikita. Like a yes. bigger Nikita. Yes. Uh so he goes to this guy's house. Uh this guy has Nino. He's had him for a while, so he's going to do a refresher with him. So he teaches them so it's important for the dogs to know like when to turn on uh for full protection, but also to turn off. So during this refresher session, 
uh, Jess puts on like his big suit. I don't know what it's made of. I feel like when I see the dogs attack that it just, it still just looks like it hurts. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it does. Like if you've ever seen police training videos, like police dog training videos, you'll eat the the big like padded sort of suit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So that's what he had on. Uh, So Andre's kind of like walking around with the dog outside and then he tells the dog, I think it's get him. Mm-hmm. So Andre's like, get him. And the dog just like turns on, runs towards Jas, and just jumps on him and bites him. Mm-hmm. And he, he teaches the dog to bite like upper arm closer to the chest mm-hmm. so that if the other person that's getting bit um, has a weapon, it's harder for them to get access to it mm-hmm. and to get the dog. So he does that, and then the release word is out. Mm-hmm. So he says, out, comes get the dog. He actually walks over, grabs the dog by the collar, says out, and then brings the dog back mm-hmm. and puts him in a down. It looks like he he's using German words. It is. And I think it's because so that people don't say it yeah. around them. I don't know if it, I think it's a style of training because I remember we there was somebody at our previous place of work. She was a rep for a company and she did police dog training. And I think it's a specific type of training called Schitzen because <laughs> I remember laughing at it. <laughs> Schitzen your pants in? <laughs> yes, because it makes people a shits in their pants when this dog comes for them. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I'm, I, I'll look it up. You keep talking. But like it's so it's it's a German style of training. Okay, um, I thought it's because, like, let's say you're walking down the street with your dog, mm-hmm. and this other person is talking to their buddy, and they're like, get him, get him! You don't yeah. want the dog to, like, turn on accidentally. Oh, so it says, sh- <laughs> so it's like, it's called, like, it's actually spelt, like, S-C-H-U-T-Z-H-U-N-D. So it's like, it's like Schutzhund, which, which, um, Hund in German is dog, H-U-N-D. Yeah. Sorry, continue. Keep going. No, that's fine. Okay. What's the sh- What's the shit part? <laughs> Let me see. Uh, protection. Protection dog. Oh, protection dog. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I thought it was that so the, like, the dog wouldn't hear like, get him on mm-hmm. the corner of the street and then kind of just turn on and attack somebody. Anybody, like somebody, yeah. Like a kid yeah. or something. Yeah. So anyway, so he puts, he brings the dog back, puts the dog in a down and then Jazz takes off his <laughs> takes off his suit, and then he says, "Okay, put the leash. I don't know if you had like another collar on. Put the leash on the other collar." And while he's like, "Oh, just a second, I'll put my suit back on." And while he's changing the leash, the dog gets free and mm-hmm. attacks Jazz again. Mm-hmm. So if he if he would not have put on his suit again. He would get bit. Did you see this one? Yes, I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think actually he takes off his suit to let the dog, to release the dog. Anyways, mm-hmm. if he would not have put on his suit again, like he was toast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I that If we were to ever like meet or interview Joss, I would ask how many bites have you had in your training? Oh, yeah. Like, do you ever slip I'm up? I'm sure he has. I'm, I would, I would, that would be a good question for, we should go into some of the Q&A, Q&As and say, have you ever gotten bit? What was your mistake? Yeah. What do you, what did you learn from it? Mm, mm, future episode. Don't, future don't episode. take off your suit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he practices this uh, with Jas, all the exercises he does with Jas and also with um, Andre's, sorry, he does them with Andre and then also his wife. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because this is to protect like his wife and his daughter while he's out traveling, boxing all over the world. Uh, so he does it with the wife too. And then they practice home invasion. So searching inside the house. I found that so cool. Yeah. So Andre and his wife, they're sitting and they have the dog. And Jas comes in and he's like in the dog's face and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Jas runs and hides in a room and he, ha- he puts on his suit. He lets Andre know like when to release the dog. And then when they release the dog, they they say search. And you can see the dog just like going from room to room, like super fast. Yeah. Uh, and when he gets into the room that Jas is in, he just like 
jumps right at him and bites him. Mm -hmm. So he does that also, again, like with Andre and Andre's wife. Um, And that was that was the refresher. Yeah, it's so interesting to me. It's interesting to me. And he says it in the episode, too. It is the highest form of obedience Mm -hmm. in dog training because it's easy to get drive in a dog it's easy to ramp a dog up that's easy that's the easy part the hard part is turning it off on a dime like and and that's part of the training that you don't say a command more than once and that's how you pass the refresher he's like no do it again like only say it once it's once one word command out Mm -hmm. means like drop the dude like now And if he doesn't, like, it's like, yeah, correction with the collar. Yeah. And that's how you teach them. And that's how everybody should teach their dog. Not sit, 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 stop, 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 (laughs) down, down, down. (laughs) Once, once and enforce it because that's, that's obedience. Yeah. Yeah. So that was episode three. I'm thinking it should be the same with my kids. Like, do your laundry, do your laundry, <laughs> clean your room, <laughs> clean your room, clean your room. <laughs> and then um, you just stand there and you wait. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get slip leads for my children. <laughs> just a little, boop, little, little pop of the leash, little little neck pressure until they <laughs> get the laundry put away. Oh, that's funny. I wonder if that's where the term "wring your neck" comes from. <laughs> I'm gonna wring your neck. Ring your neck. Yeah. Uh, so that was episode three. And then episode four was just, yeah, let's talk about <laughs> episode four. Mm. So there's this boy, Andrew, who has this service dog uh, because he has anxiety. So it's a multi poo named Heaven. And this dog seems like okay while she's inside the house but is just a wild on walks Mm -hmm. and she got loose um one day and almost got hit by a car yeah they live close to a busy street and she ran like literally into traffic and they were like oh my god Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh so they called jess Mm -hmm. cali canine (laughs) yeah uh so heaven doesn't listen uh she's also wearing a harness Mm -hmm. which doesn't help because she like we've talked about this before um she can it's not pull the right easily. kind of pressure yeah. yeah it's pressure on the shoulders where they can like pull the most so <laughs> so jess gets to their house and there he looks at the dog plays with the dog a little bit and gets the dog to sit and all that and then he's like okay let's see this dog outside so they take the dog for a walk and he's just watching this the mom getting the dog ready oh my god it was my favorite part of the show (laughs) so she's putting on these like little booties so that her feet don't get dirty and or wet because she doesn't go on the wet grass and then they get to the sidewalk and she's like oh no i forgot the pet stroller and the backpack (laughs) And Jess is just like, what? So she goes back inside the house and gets this pet stroller and this big bag to take the dog for a walk. He thought she was joking, but she wasn't. She was not joking. So he makes it very clear that um, as the show goes along, that she is definitely like part, like the big, probably the biggest part of the problem uh, with this, Mm -hmm. with this. (laughs) This, <laughs> this dog that doesn't listen um she humanizes the dog a lot mm-hmm. it's like her i think she mentioned that it was like her daughter that she never had like a granddaughter yep, yep. yeah and that's how she treats her uh she buys her like all these little cute little things little cute collar little pink collar because it was cute yeah. um and that's fine i mean you can buy stuff because it's cute but you also need stuff that's functional. It's it's uh, one thing if it's for like an Insta photo or you're doing it for like Halloween, like as a little like cutesy thing, like a one-off mm-hmm. or whatever, but to be like le- legit dressing your dog every day, like it's like a child. Because you don't want it's, their little paws weird. to get dirty. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. So the first exercise that they did is that they worked on engagement. So they got Heaven um, to step onto like a box, like a platform. 
and sit. Um, and then he does that with uh, the, the kid, Andrew. So Andrew does that and he tells Andrew, like, you need, this needs to be done like 50 times a day. And since this dog is your service dog, you need to do at least 30 of those 50 times. Yeah. And he does. Mm-hmm. And you can see during the next visit, like she does very well inside the house. But as soon as they bring her outside, she doesn't listen anymore. She's also she's also on the wet grass. Yep. Yep. Refusing to like move without refusing her to sit. And they're like, and they're like, no, but it's because she doesn't want her feet wet. And he's like, uh, yeah, I don't care. It's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> she's not gonna sit on the wet grass. So they do some exercises outside, and he's like, we're not leaving this backyard until until she sits and she does a lot of progress and I don't think we see like the very end of the uh, training with this dog but she does do a lot of progress with Andrew Um, the last walk that they took like she's listening a lot more it's not pulling she it's almost like she was she's had like too much caffeine right she's on this walk and she's just like high strung and Mm -hmm. just looking everywhere and pulling And then the last walk that we see Andrew do with this dog, Heaven, she's not pulling. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yay! That's what I thought was the coolest part of the episode is that like, and and again, it's like a holistic approach to the animal. It's like animal and owner. And Mm -hmm. so here was this dog that was purchased for this kid who's completely capable of, of, of caring for this dog. Yet the mom's doing all the care work for him and like he just like has this dog to like cuddle whenever he wants. So he teaches the kid no. Like he and one part of the episode he was like, "Um, so whose dog is this? Like yours? Yeah. Okay. So why why is your mom doing all the work? Like let's Mm -hmm. go kid. Like which I thought was awesome. And because you're teaching the kid responsibility too. That's like good skills for a kid to have and I don't know how old he was like he looked like what like an at least preteen at the very yeah. least mm-hmm. so totally capable of doing it like my kids are great with the dogs and they teach them tricks and stuff like that and I think like you know even as parents you get into the easy way of doing things which is like you it's it takes time It just like training a dog it's just it's just like raising children you are responsible for teaching them certain skills and mm-hmm. it's easy to just like do everything for them because it takes time and patience to get somebody to teach a new skill. It does. And, um, you know, we all live busy lives and stuff like that. But y- you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can your your kids can only wear Velcro shoes for so long. <laughs> <laughs> Bunny I can, ears. I, I can remember having a friend being like, you know, like I can't. I can't find Velcro shoes for my kid. And it's like, well, that's maybe a sign that it's time for them to learn how to tie their shoes. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. But you know what I mean? It's it's true, though. It's like it's so easy to do for um, kids because it's just easier and it makes things go faster in our like super mm-hmm. fast paced lives. But at some point, like you're not you're doing them a huge disservice. You have to teach people how to exist in their own lives and be responsible and be accountable for what's going on and especially with dogs because dogs if untrained and not you're not accountable or responsible for the behavior can be a liability Mm -hmm. yeah the dangerous animals dangerous anyway that was good show i would i would i would recommend watching the show i'm gonna continue watching the season oh me too and um, especially episode two Mm. Yeah, you need to watch episode two. It's such a good one because it's just so simple and straightforward. There wasn't any major issues with this dog. They just didn't know how to communicate with him. Yeah. It's just, yeah, they were on two separate, like the, the, there's three people. Well, there's two people in one dog, sorry. <laughs> Who's humanizing <laughs> now? Um, two people and one dog in that household and none of them were on the same page. So Ugh. it's it's chaotic and it's not fun, right? No. Like it's when you train your dog and they listen to you and then you enjoy your relationship with them like so much more. Yeah. You're like, it's like you're proud. Like you just love them. Like it, like it just, it's just, it's just, it's just good people. It's just plain good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I got that's to say. That's how it'll be with Ralph. 
yes it will I can't wait to see him come along and sometimes I it's know. like yeah there's challenges like there always is people learn differently and mm-hmm. you just got to figure out how to get through to them and when you do it's like it's rewarding it's so rewarding yeah when they figure it out <laughs> yeah I'm just thinking about how so he would like run to the couch mm-hmm and then sit and then kind of like put his front paws on it and then I'd go over and be like no off and then I'd like take the leash and like drag him off Uh but now (laughs) I think he he kind of knows now so he'll run to the couch with like his little like high head but then he'll keep going it's like he's making me like run to the couch for nothing (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, good boy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Ralph, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How is Gibbon's uh, gut going? Well, it's funny that you say that. The update there is, um, so he, Gibbon went to the cottage with my father, everybody, and he ate a whole pile of birdseed and came home violently ill for days where we couldn't get him to hold down food and we i decided to take him to the vet because he was like losing weight and like nothing was staying down took him to the vet had some very expensive blood work done and it turns out uh he's got the pe- he had the pancreatitis so no. um it's from eating birdseed which had a ha- high fat content but i always found that his gut was like he ha- mostly has loose stools than than solid if at at the best of times it's like literally like 50 50 so uh, that's why I was happy to do the blood work and then I had a chat with the vet about food and stuff like that and of course if I could go raw like I wish I could but it's super expensive and just not suited to her lifestyle but she recommended going with a less rich food so I went to the food store and had a long conversation with somebody there who has a very similar dog who also had pancreatitis once she recommended this brand of food that she was very happy with so we Um, had gastrointestinal food from the vet which is like literally one of the worst rated foods which is why I went to the dog food store because I Mm -hmm. wanted to see if there was a healthier brand Um, but he he was fine and like his guts evened out on the crap food which I was bummed about but even the lady at the store was like no you gotta put him on the gastrointestinal stuff she's like I know it's like the worst but like you have to like let his his system like even out from all the super high fatty stuff especially with everything inflamed so uh, now we're transitioning him to the new food and I'm noticing the loose stool starting to come back again but no vomiting which I'm happy with okay so we're gonna give it another week and this is the sad thing too is that he's so so skinny he's lost too much weight he's too skinny and I I don't know how to get the calories into him without inflaming his whole entire sensitive system so today I I wrote a message to the adored beast and they got back to me right away and um super kind and I just asked like I told them what was going on and what kind of the issues we were having and um, they wrote back and recommended a couple of different products and was like, if you have any questions, you can reach out to this person, let us know. They're like, I sent them a photo and they were like, he's a very beautiful boy. I was Aww. like, yes, he is. <laughs> so um, okay. I might I might uh, try one of their gut soothe. Yeah. Uh, pre and, and, and probiotics to see if that helps break down the food a little bit more and yeah. they also they also recommended like a liver enzyme so okay. um i might start out with the start with one thing one thing and then see if the li- liver stuff does to like help yeah so we'll go from hopefully, there hopefully fingers crossed mm-hmm. poor gibbon poor gibbon my poor gibbon Aww. I know. I just want him to put on a little bit of weight because Weimar yeah. is so skinny already. He's got no weight to lose. I know. When he, it doesn't take much before he literally starts looking like a skeletor. So, poor Gimo. Aw. That's okay. a wrap. That's a wrap on <laughs> Let's Boop Snoots. Boop Snoots. See you next See week. See you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.